said, Humph, just humph and no more. Presently, the horses came to him on Monday morning with saddles on their backs and bits in their mouths. Camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. And the horses went away and told the man and the woman. What a shame. Well, you're just going to have to work harder. Presently, the dogs came to him with sticks in their mouths. Camel, oh camel. Come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. And the dogs went away. And the dogs went away and told the man and the woman. Oh dear. Well, you're just going to have to work harder like the horses. Presently, the oxen came to him with yoke on their necks. Camel, oh camel. Come and plow like the rest of us. Huh? And the oxen went away and told the man and the woman. That's not right. Well, you're just going to have to work harder like the horses and dogs. At the end of the day, the man and the woman called the horses and the dogs and the oxen together. Six, oh six, I'm very sorry for you with world so new and all. But that mm -hmm. hump thing out in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now. So we are going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the six very angry, with the world so new and all, and they held a palaver and an indala and a panchet and a powwow on the edge of the desert, and came, and the camel came chewing on milkweed, was a scooshing idol, and laughed at them. <laughs> and then the camel went away again. Presently there came along the genie in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Genies always travel that way because it is magic. Genie, of all deserts, is it right for someone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not. Well, there's a hump thing in the middle of your island desert, and he's a howler himself. With his long neck and his long legs, he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning, and he won't trot. Woo! That's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, hump. And he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only huff. And he won't plow. Very good. I'll go hump him if you'll kindly wait a minute. The genie rolled herself up in a dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most excruciating idol looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. <coughs> My long and bubbling friend, what is this I hear of you doing no work? Huh. The genie sat down with her chin in her hand and began to think of great magic, while the camel looked at his own reflection in a pool of water. You've given the six extra work since Monday morning, all on account of your excruciating idleness. I shouldn't say that again if I were you. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. No sooner had he said it, he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great bee lolloping hump. Do you see that? That's your very own hump that you brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. How cunning with this hump on my back. That's all made a purpose, because you missed those three days. Now you can go three days without eating, because you can live on your hump. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go join the six, and behave. Hump yourself. And the camel humped himself, hump it all, and went away to join the six. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it hump now, not to hurt his feelings, but he has never yet caught up with those three days that he had missed in the beginning of the world. <laughs> and he has never yet learned how to behave.